it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you for joining me for today's video. We're not making soap today, but instead, as promised a little while ago, I'm going to share with you how I create labels to use in the Munbin printer. Now, in case you missed it a little while ago, Munbin reached out to me and sent me the printer to have a trial of it. And they sent me a few, some of their labels and things like that. Ever since then, I have used this machine pretty much daily in the shop and I still love it as much as the day as I filmed the review for it. It prints without any glitches. It just prints every single time. Really nice, crisp, clear colors, nice and dark as well. Um, and it's just so simple and easy to use and it has made printing the shipping labels really easy. There were a couple of little things that I was concerned about when I got the printer, but I've been able to sort of um, work around those little concerns and I will tell you that. And I'll also address some of the issues that people did bring up with me um, on that original video. Now, I have actually taken my printer out of the little space that I originally set it up in for today's video because it's going to be easier for you to see without having to go up and down on my little sort of workstation and seeing inside the dark little area area that I have them. So I've put it onto my bench to do this today. Now a couple of things that did come up when I spoke about this um, printer was someone brought up the fact that um, thermal labels fade. Unfortunately, yes, they do. Thermal labels will always fade over time, but depending upon the quality of the paper that you are using or the quality of the stickers, it can actually last a very long time and it does depend where you're storing it as well. If it's out in the direct sunlight, it's going to fade a lot quicker than if you have them inside a room or stored away in a dark space. It is just the nature of thermal printing. However, that shouldn't be a concern when it comes to doing your shipping labels because it should move quickly enough through the post that those labels are not going to fade while it is in that shipping process. So there is absolutely no worries there. You're usually looking at months, if not years, for a thermal label to fade away completely. So that is not really too much of a concern when it comes to this. The other sort of concern was that it develops black spots when you put warm things onto it. That is the whole idea of thermal printing. Thermal is through heat. So the idea behind this is that there is a special um, chemical within thermal paper. So you can only ever put thermal paper through these machines. And as heat touches it in certain places, it will go black. That does mean if you have a hot cup of coffee and you sit that down on top of a shipping label or any other form of label or even a receipt from the store, it is going to get a black ring where that cup has sat because that is the whole thing behind thermal printing. But again, when it comes time to your shipping labels, the label should actually survive through the shipping process without getting any damage because a majority of the shipping agencies already know that thermal labels are affected by heat. So this should be no heat applied through their processes. Um, if you are applying them to products that need to be heated, that is when the issues is actually going to arise. So those two sort of concerns that people have, very, very minimal because it shouldn't affect um, you using it particularly as a shipping label machine. Now the concerns that I actually had about it, one was about the leads that were coming out of the back here and I have been able to somewhat solve that issue. I pretty much as soon as I did that review, got back onto the Mumbin website and I ordered myself the label unwinder and that arrived and that fixed the issues of the cables and I will show you how. So when we plug the machine in the back, one of the things I said I was um, thought was a bit of a design flaw were these cables. And because when you then take your labels, particularly if they're not in the box, you actually need to situate them quite a fair distance back so that they don't interfere with the, um, the cables here. But if you don't have them in this box and you've only got a little pile, I found that they started to get tangled up in these labels as they were pulling through the machine. But now that we've got a little label and winder, it's got a little lip in here, which sits nicely over the top of our cables. Let's get these out of the way. It then means I can pop my shipping labels. We'll pop them on the right way. They sit under there and then, 
we have this little wind on arm. I'll just pop that piece on for now as is. This sits on the top and then you put your other labels in here and you can actually have the two labels set up and nothing gets tangled up in these wires. So this label winder has been so great. Now the other thing I did when I also ordered this label winder, they originally sent me the pink two inch labels. I ordered myself some white and I also ordered these as well. And I've used these so much. That was as big as that pink one. And I've used this size so much. They are 2.25 by 1.25. And they are so useful for printing up little ingredients um, lists to go on sort of samples. Um, I've used them to print up little barcode labels to go on the back of my products with the little descriptions and things. So this size label has been super useful to me. And we're gonna use this one today. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this out of the way because we don't need our shipping labels. I'm going to unclip this off of here. And it is just a matter of pulling it up. I'm going to take my end off. I'm going to slide my roll through and then I'm going to slide this end back on and just make sure that it is nice and tight on there. Now you can either put it on the bottom or the top rack. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go for the bottom just because I've got nothing else in there today. And then we're going to load our machine up. So we're going to open it up. I am going to thread it through. Now you can see my little guides. They are too wide apart as for this. So what I'm going to do is just gently push on the sides until they come to the middle and that will guide my paper through. I'm going to bring it over the rollers, bring it to the front and then close the top down. And then we've got a switch on the back to turn it on. And now that it's on, I'm gonna calibrate it so it knows which label is in here. I found I don't always have to calibrate it, but I am gonna do so just to make sure that it runs right. I'm gonna hold the button down until I get a long beep. And then it's gonna double check what label's in there. Make sure that it is all nicely lined up. And then what I tend to do is open the machine back so we don't waste all these labels. Open it back up, I should say. I'm going to pull my labels back through. Close the machine. And what it tends to do is throw out a couple of labels at the start. Now, originally, this was another sort of downfall for it for me. I said it was a bit of a waste. But what I've actually been doing is saving these labels. And I hand write on them to stick on things around the place. Maybe use them as a sticky note or something like that. So they actually do get used. So it hasn't been too much of a problem with waste there. But let's go ahead and print up the labels I want. So there are quite a number of ways in which you can design labels to go with this machine, which was one of the things that really stood out to me that I wasn't limited or constricted to software. So you can basically use any of your drawing programs, any of your free design art programs. There are the possibilities are absolutely endless. The first one I'm going to show you how I create is using a drawing or vector art program. I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator but you could quite easily use any sort of vector program you've got, um, including things like Corel Draw. I think you could probably use Paint Shop, all of those sort of ones. And you can use free ones like GIMP and Inkscape as well. And they're all pretty much the similar sort of concept on how to create them. You just need to find the right buttons in the program that you are using. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up Adobe Illustrator. Now you probably can't see much on my screen, but it is coming up for me. Now I did try to get fancy and record the screen, but for some reason, whenever I try and do this, it never shows everything that is on my screen. I've just clicked on new file and I get a little box asking me what size artwork I wanna make. So I'm setting it to the size of the labels, which is 2.25 by 1.25 inches. And this white space is my artboard and that's how big my labels are. I'm also asking it to open up this image here and this is something I've had from off of Canva and I've sold it or saved it as a PNG file with a transparent background 
and I'm just going to kind of play around and position it on my artboard here for how big I want it to show on my actual label once printed. I'm going to make an authority to leave sticker so when people place an order and they ask that it be left if they're not home I always put on an authority to leave. Now I did chat I was going to say please leave at front door but I decided to actually change it to the official wording and once I get all that done I then change it into my branded font so that it fits in with everything to do with my business and I'm just having a bit of a play around and then saying to leave the parcel at the front door if they're not home so this is just a very very simple little message but this saves me having to get the labels printed through a proper professional printing place whether that be through someone like this to print or any of the other numerous places that do it so here is the please leave at front door and um, if not home and I'm going to resize that so that it's um, not all hidden by my little man. Do remember though that your labels are always going to be printed in black and white. So there's no point getting too fancy with colours. And also try and keep your images as bold and crisp as you possibly can. So now that I've actually got my design all done, it is simply a matter of doing the whole print process. So I like my keyboards. I'm going to go Control P or you could go to your print function. So I'm going to select the Mumbin printer. I'm then going to select the right label size, the 2.25 by 1.25 inch label, which is about 57 by 32 millimeter. Once I've got that, I just check in my window to make sure that it is in the right, it's going to actually print the right way around. So we've got the landscape there. And I actually want it to print maybe, let's go for 20 labels, because then I'll just pop them on the side and then I can peel them off as and when I need them. And then I'm just going to hit print and this should start printing them out. And then you should be able to tear them off and that is our label and I'm super pleased with how that has printed up and I think that should actually give the postman a little bit of a smile too. So that's the first way and I completely understand that not everyone feels comfortable using these design programs that are out there. I mean, it took me quite a number of years to learn how to design in these programs. So it, it does take a little bit, but don't worry. If you're no good at using things like Illustrator, GIMP, or even Inkscape is a free one as well. There is another option where it is super duper easy. And I actually still use this as well. And that is Canva. And it's really good if you do have the paid version of Canva because you get access to so many different things on here. Um, and it's really, really easy to actually design something in Canva and then print it on the Mumbin. You just need to keep in mind that Although there are so many beautifully colored images in Canva, your printer is only ever going to print in black and white. So you need to make sure that you're picking appropriate images and text that are going to look good printed in black and white. Let's get our paper changed over first. And that is super easy. First thing I'm going to do is lift this one up and pull it out. And then I'm going to pull up on here. It looks difficult. It's the angle I'm standing at. <laughs> I'm going to pull my end off, pull that roll of label off, and now I'm going to pop in my pink one. I'm going to pop our end back on here, and I'm going to just pop that back in. Now this is a little bit too um, narrow, so just going to widen it a little bit, pop our label through, just bring it back to make sure it's nice. It, you, know, you don't want it too tight, otherwise it's going to distort the paper, but you want it tight enough that it can't move around too much. And that looks about right. Let's close our lid. And it looks like it has already calibrated, but just to be on the safe side, so usually you can tell because when you go to rip it, it, it rips quite easily. We'll save that one for another project but I am going to calibrate it just in case to make sure our labels are all lined up. And again, I just open it up, bring it back so that we're not wasting too much. 
and it will spit out that first one. Now you don't have to do that, but um, I do like to do it if I'm designing something that I would like to be central. Now that we've got that all set up, it is time to come back over to our computer and I am gonna go into Canva and we're gonna design. So the record function works better when I'm on the internet. So we're on Canva here and the first thing I'm do is gonna do create design and we're gonna do the two inch circle. So I'm actually gonna change this to a two inch by two inch and it's gonna come up as a square because that is just how Canva works. But we can easily create a circular design on here. And what I like to first of all do is come into the elements, pick circle, and then I like to pick one of these outlines. I actually decided that the circle under Underneath was probably actually a better one because it had a thinner border and then I stretch it to fit into my two inch um, sort of artboard here and that means I know where I need to keep all of my elements in here next thing I'm going to do is do the thank you now you could quite easily um, type this in a font but there are so many great sort of images here that other people have done it's sometimes easier to use theirs. I am gonna change this over to graphic and that just means it takes away all the photos which are just not going to print up well. There are so many options in here. It can get a little bit overwhelming. So right now I'm just going through and finding the sort of thank you that I'm looking for. Um, I don't want it too thin because it might not print up very nicely and I also don't want it too chunky or too um, blocked because again we're doing that thermal printing I kind of like that but I didn't like the dots I sometimes scroll through here I have a look at some of the other designs that come up as a magic recommendation and then I kind of decide that I'm getting too lost in things and to generally go right back up to the top and pick something from out of the top um, layer I decided that one was a little bit too um, blocky for my liking so I deleted it and then I found another thank you which was this one here decided I really liked that resized it a little bit got it to where I wanted it to go on my circle just rotating it seeing what's gonna look best once we get it all done I'm gonna move it up to the top and then I'm gonna put in some other things by clicking on the text um, I'm going to use my subheading and now this has got all of my branded fonts in here as part of the paid version so I've been able to upload the fonts that are a part of my logo. I'm going to have a little bit of a play in here as well just to try and get them to sit where I want. I'm actually doing this thank you one for the Pimp My Soap because I already have a thank you label for Soyin Shea. So I've just changed it over to the font that I use for Pimp My Soap. I'm just playing around with how it's all lined up so we can get it to sit around the um, other thank you because we can't actually do anything with that being that it is a an element as it is so we've done the thank you for your order and then I'm just gonna say that it really made my day and it's not gonna look very nice having everything straight on here so I do need to correct my a little spelling mistake but for now I'm just gonna change that over to a different font make it smaller uh, I'm gonna drag it out of the rest of there so I can actually see and then I will fix my little spelling mistake. And what I wanna do, so I'm not, I've just got loads of straight fonts. I'm gonna go into the effects section on here. I'm just making it a bit smaller first. And then I'm gonna come up into the effects and there's a little bit in here down the bottom that is a curve and I want it to curve the other way. So I'm just gonna push it up until I'm happy. I'm happy with that, gonna drag it down into the bottom and next thing I'm going to do is I'm deciding I actually do want another little element in there there's that little gap so I'm thinking some little hearts so I'm going to go back to my elements type in hearts and see what it brings up and there are too many moving ones for my liking so I'm just changing it over to static and I really like these pink little hearts now I know it's not going to print up in pink but I really like the sort of design of that I will have to later on change it into a the color to black because I discovered it wasn't going to print but I'm just going to kind of position that in there 
with everything else. I'm going to actually send this to the back of my board because I can't get those little hearts. So send it to the back, which means I can pick up my little pink hearts, position them where I want. And then I remember that I can actually highlight everything and use my position and center everything in my label. And I'm pretty happy with how that is looking. So what we now want to do is actually save this once we can, so that we can actually send it to the printer. So what I'm going to do is first of all, remove that circle because that we don't want that to print. And I'm going to come up into that share and we're going to go download and I'm going to save it as a PNG file and I'm going to save it. Originally I saved it with a transparent background, but I did actually have to end up changing that so it didn't have a transparent background. But I'm saving that onto the computer and then I'm going to put that file so that I know where it is on the computer ready for printing. Okay, so now that we've got our file, I did change my hearts into black. We're going to come over into where I have got that loaded, which is just here. So it's going to open up. This is the PNG file and we'll close that because we don't need that in our way. And I'm going to bring up my print screen. I'm going to make sure that I change this over to the Munbin printer. So that's my second one down. And then once we've got that, I'm going to come down to our paper size and we want the two inch circle. And we can see that now. And just to make sure that this is printing right, I'm only going to print one to start with. And that has come up perfectly. So what I'll do is actually just print myself another few. It's going to make me do it all that process again. So we'll go mumbin, I'll go my two inch circle and we will print 20 of them and we'll go print. Okay, so there are the two different labels with the two different methods of which I have um, done them up. So no matter what your sort of level is with designing, you can use those programs or any other drawing program to create these. And I'm sure there's plenty of other online um, things. I'm pretty sure that Monkey Pick or something does them as well. Um, any of those sort of drawing programs, you are going to be able to use them to design labels to print with your Munbin printer. Don't think that the Munbin printer is just for thermal shipping labels as so many people actually do use it for. You can use it for so many other things and save yourself a lot of printing costs because it is all thermal there's no ink involved the labels they are so cheap when you go over onto the mumbin um, website to purchase them there are links down in the description box so you can go and check them out um, plus there are other places that you can buy other um, other size labels as well and they all work so well in that printer and it's so easy to change between the different labels as well so that is those ones there. Now, something I do do with these labels, I haven't got one at the moment because I have used them all, but when I finish with the cores that are either inside of these labels or I've got my FPOS roll machine that has these little wooden cores in them, I have a few other things in my drawer. I'm just looking down to see what's in there. They all have these little wooden cylinder cores in them. And what I do is I actually keep those. And then when I print off a load of labels like this, I then sticky the one end onto my core and then I roll it up and that just makes sure that they all stay nice and tidy. They don't get all ruined or anything else. As I said, I, I don't have one at the moment, but I'm sure by the end of the day, I will have one to roll these ones onto. So that is how I print and design my labels for the Munbin printer. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me today. There are links, as I said, down below, um, to the Munbin printer in there and you can also check out the labels. When you do go over there, make sure you are changing the website to the country that you are in to make sure that you are getting the machine that actually matches in with the shipping company that you use. So here in Australia, there are two options. There's the Australia Post machine, which I have, and then there's also another one that does all the send all and um, 
Corius please and all those labels as well. So just make sure you are getting the right machine and remember you can do so much more with it as well. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me today and until the next video comes out, thank you so much for watching and have a great one. See you then. Bye.